Hey everybody, it is Wednesday and we are backstage live with Cindy Bro. I am Cindy from Cindy Bro Marketing and I have a wonderful guest that I'm excited to talk to, Leah from Gunny and Company. How are you? Good, how are you? Great. Can you tell everybody a little bit about your business and uh, what it is you do? Yep. So I started Gunny & Co. in 2019. Um, it started just as like a little hobby, something I did. Um, did a lot of art projects and crafts and kind of every medium under the sun I kind of tried to master. So I thought, you know, everyone was asking for gifts and stuff like that to purchase. So I thought that maybe starting a small business was kind of the right idea in my spare time. Um, so that's how we started. Uh, we my biggest struggle starting, I didn't know what to name it. And so that held me back for a little bit. Um, I just couldn't think of a good name, um, something that incorporated like what we believe in and what we truly love. And so we ended up, my husband and I ended up going with Gunny & Co named after our retired canine Gunny. So part of our proceeds each month go back to um, supporting canines and vesting them as well. So um, it's a little nod to something that we love. So it's kind of cool. I love that. I did not realize that that was the reason behind your name. That's so cool. Yeah. So <laughs> what kind of products uh, do you offer? So right now we offer a little bit of home decor items um, and our specialty that we really love doing is we do soy candles and wax melts with hand soaps and room sprays as well to match all of the scents. And we also redo some furniture and build some furniture pieces as well. So we've come a long way from where we started. And this was uh, something that you did in your spare time and just kind of said might make a great business. Yep. So I just started it kind of as a hobby, something fun to do, um, working on projects. And I opened up a small booth um, at a local store and it kind of snowballed and grew really big from there. Um, and so I ended up um, in January of 20. 20, so last year, right before COVID, um, I ended up leaving my full-time job to kind of do this full-time and dive into it. So then from there, it grew um, pretty big and we're in a couple different locations now and we have our own website as well. So we've we've kind of come a long way from the beginning. So that's been really nice. <laughs> How did you um, go from, or I guess what made it, made you determined to quit your job and really focus full time on this. Like that's a huge leap. And I remember how scary that was when I decided, right, to leave corporate. Mm -hmm. So what was it that, you know? Um, so we, you know, it was a little bit of trying to balance a little bit more of the family life. Um, we have three boys and their busy schedules and working full time. And I was coaching at the time and then trying to squeeze in doing what I really love. And it was starting to kind of like spill over where it was to a point um, that I was using some vacation days to take off to be able to catch up on custom orders and um, use my time that way. And then trying to do stuff on the weekends and I didn't want to miss any events with the kids. And so um, that's when I decided, you know, I really think that I can make this go and I can't grow any bigger. Um, with where I'm at currently without taking a big, scary step. And so that was probably the scariest thing I've ever had to do. Um, I, I loved my job prior, you know, I was there for eight years and it was a career. And so um, I wasn't sure, you know, I was really nervous with leaving as I'm sure everybody is when they start a business and small business to make that final leap. And um, so it kind of, it puts you in a spot where you had to decide, like, I'm going to go all in and give it my all and it's just going to go from there or I have to step back a little bit. And so I took that jump and I haven't looked back since. Um, and I'm really thankful for that. So and then, you know, two, two, three months later, um, COVID hit us and mm -hmm. the kids went virtual like instantly. And um, I was really thankful. It was kind of perfect timing to be able to set myself up and then to be able to be um, 
home and help with the kids virtually and make sure that they had what they needed as well. So it kind of worked out. It was like perfect timing. So yeah, that that's really awesome. And did you like what did your husband think? Was he behind it 100%? Was he a little nervous? Was he like, oh, this is a he... big change? Like. <laughs> It is a big change. Um, and it's so funny with him because sometimes I feel like I try to get his opinion on something and he doesn't really give me like his opinion. He'll just be like, whatever you think, you know, if you can make it work, then do it. If you don't want to do it, then don't. And so um, I was really torn. I was like, this isn't something I would normally ever decide. This isn't, you know, this is totally outside my comfort zone. And I really just kind of need your opinion on it. And he just really left it up to me and was like, if you think you can make it work, you know, and, you know, then make it work if that's really what you want to do. So he's been really supportive through this whole journey and process. Um, and he's been there, um, which I've been really thankful for. I know that there's not a lot of people that always have that support system um, in place. And um, so he's not super crafty. Um or anything like that. And so when I started doing some of the furniture and the signs and things like that, um, he didn't know what some of the tools were that I was using or that I was needing. And so I've kind of taken over the garage. Um, so the garage is kind of like my space now and the basement. So he's kind of lost his workspaces to do anything. So, but it's been, it's been fun. <laughs> so he's gotten to the point now um, when like the, when I get supplies in and stuff like that, or orders, um, that he's, you know, right there helping and unboxing candle jars and, you know, helping ship stuff and stuff like that. So he does, a, he's really good with, with some of that work. So that's been really helpful. That, that's great. And, and it's nice that, um, he allows you to have the freedom to try it. Like, to, you know, if you believe yeah. in yourself, if you believe in this, then <laughs> go for it like that. That's scary too, but that that's a you know nice little uh, support I think from yeah. That aspect. So it's it's been nice. <laughs> so did you? I mean, I don't know how to make a candle or anything. Is that something that you were, it was something that you were doing already, or did you have to research and find the right products to create the candles or um, figure out the scents or like what what's that? Product? So. It's so it's kind of funny. Um, we didn't when we when I started this, I didn't do candles at all. I did I did signs. I did some hand towels. I did some decor pieces, and candles were not in the picture at all. And now that's our main focus. So it's really funny. So um, I started in 2019 in June, and uh, in August actually, um, my friends and I we took a trip to Nashville. Um, and one of the things that they had planned as a surprise for me was a candle making class because they knew that I liked to like try things and make things and I was crafty and they really weren't, but they thought, well, maybe we can make this work. So um, we took the candle class. I fell in love with it right away. I was super into it. And, um, you know, I kind of was like, well, this would be kind of cool to be able to do all the time. We didn't, we don't have something like that in our area. Um, with candle classes, or I couldn't find at the time anybody really that made candles locally in the area. So I was like, I think I can make this work. So um, the drive back, it's like a 10, 11 hour drive. The whole time back, I was researching and coming up with like, which supplies are better, what wax to use, different things like that. And by the time we got home, I had um, ordered a bunch of stuff to try and kind of figure out um, what I wanted to do. And so it started out kind of just dabbling in it a little bit, making a couple. Um, I started with three cents. I didn't think I was really going to expand that it would just kind of be something fun to do every once in a while. And um, then it kind of took off from there. And people really loved that it was made locally, um, that that they knew what was going into their candle as well. Um, so that was really important to my customers. I was finding out that they wanted to know what their products were made of um, and that they were willing to support somebody local 
to be able to provide that to them. So um, that Christmas, I released a couple more scents and I did a like a Christmas line and that really took off. And that's when I kind of knew like, OK, I need to pivot and, you know, start doing this um, a little bit more for my business. And um, so that first year I did tin jars and then we transitioned to to glass jars and a little bit bigger um, style. So um, now we have eight different containers that we do candles in, um, and then we do custom candles. And we find um, that that really works well for our customers to have a variety, um, but also to keep it really simple too. So um, it's it's really grown. It's been fun. Um, this. This year we added the hand soaps and room sprays and diffusers as well to match all of our candle scents. Um, some people aren't candle people and I, I get it. They've got small kids. They want something a little bit, you know, that they don't have to worry about watching as closely um, and the wax melts. And so then we decided, well, let's add diffusers. Those are great for people with kids, you know, people who are busy, people who want their space to smell good, um, but maybe aren't home enough um, to light a candle kind of thing. And so we added those and our room sprays and hand soap. So it's been, it has grown and evolved tremendously. That's super exciting. I, and I love the story that it was your girlfriend's idea to, to take yeah. you to that class. And that's where it kind of took your business. So that, that's a mm -hmm. awesome thing. And, you know, very cool to, to experience with your, your girlfriends. What, okay. For, it almost sounds like COVID was a blessing for your business. Um, in I think, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, it's, it gives, so COVID is difficult for a lot of businesses, but I also feel like it was kind of a blessing um, for small businesses as well. First, there was a big push, um, push to support local and shop local um, makers and artists and locally owned businesses in the area. Um, there's, I'm not sure if that happened nationwide or just kind of our state line area a little bit more, um, but people were, I mean, loving to shop local and they really wanted to support those businesses. And so at the time I didn't have a website yet. I just kind of had my Facebook page and people were messaging me asking if they could order and if I could ship items. And so um, I started doing that a little bit and I realized there, there's a need for this. There's a lot of people that want to shop online, especially right now. And so um, I started building a website and learning all the technology pieces with that um, to be able to offer that where people didn't have to reach out and send a message to place an order or, you know, to know if something they could order. And so um, that was super helpful that it opened that up for small businesses and that support and sharing about small businesses and the referrals from people have been tremendous. And then um, that, that kind of stuck. I feel like that was the best takeaway from COVID is that um, people found the love for small business again, not just, you know, around the holiday season, but all year and how they could implement that in their lives daily um, to support local and their area as well. Yeah. And, and I, I saw that push as well, especially with some of my clients and, um, and it was, it's almost like that time gave us an opportunity to really reflect on our business and where we wanted to take it. So uh, mm -hmm. And I feel like we could have utilized that time to go one way or the other. And for most of us in the, the small business arena, we dug in our heels and really pushed forward. And we had the support mm -hmm. of the community, which was amazing. You know, you would see people go out to the or order takeout from the local restaurants. Don't go to the franchises and, and you know, hit up those small local shops so that yeah, that's awesome. The um, you so you're you have a website and you said you're in uh, several shops and that's where I um, found you. Was it a local store? So how did you um, approach these stores, or did they approach you to put your product in there, or you know what kind of um, uh, relationship did you have to build to to get into the doors? Mm -hmm. 
So right now um, we're in four different shops locally in our area. Um, one of them is a coffee shop up in DeForest, Wisconsin. It's called the Poppy Seed. And they had approached me um, via social media and were interested in me having my products there. Um, and that was right before COVID hit. And then they were shut down with Dane County for a while. So everything was kind of like froze on the back burner for a bit. And um, in the meantime, I had a small space at a local antique mall and I kind of just wanted to grow um, a little bit more than that. And so um, there was a shop that was opening in Rockton, um, Frosted Farmhouse. And so I had kind of reached out about a space there and um, the owner and I, we talk. And so um, we decided that that was going to be a really good fit. And so I was in there for the opening of it and I'm still there. So they opened earlier this year. And then um, in February, we transitioned to a large space at Vintage Bliss, um, which is in Beloit. And so that kind of grew us as well a little bit. And then in March, a month later, um, there was a small, um, boutique style store that was opening in Rockford and um, the Midwest Rustic, it's downtown Rockford. And so that was kind of fun. Um, I was approached by the owner, um, her and I are good friends and she wanted to bring a collection of people that made things in the state line area and really showcase artists and makers in the area. Um, and have people that made different items. And so um, there I have my candles and room sprays and all kinds of um, smelly good things there. So that's been really fun to do that. Um, and then um, more recently this year, we've had several stores um, reach out to us about making a candle line for their store specifically. And so that's been some really fun projects um, to do as well. So we just collaborated with Home on Hayloft and they're opening a storefront this weekend in Rockton. And so we made a candle line for them and that was really fun to meet with them and to pick, pick out something that matched their style and something different. And it was fun for me to work on and they got to pick out their scents and names for their candles. So it was a really fun project to collaborate on. So that's been really fun. That's super exciting. I love that. I love how it's kind of blossomed in, into where you are at today. So thinking back, I mean, you're, you're still a very young company. What's been the uh, greatest achievement that you, you have? Um, I think probably my greatest achievement is looking back at where I started, I would never have imagined that I'd be doing this full time. I never would have imagined that I'd be doing candles full time. Um, it's crazy when, when somebody asks me, they're like, oh, what do you do for a living? And I'm like, I make candles. And they're like, you make <laughs> candles for a living? And I'm like, I do, you know? Um, and that's not something that you hear often. Um, and so it's really fun to be able to say, that um, and what I make and that, you know, I, you know, I run a business off something that I hand make and pour and put my heart and soul into. So that's probably my greatest achievement with with the whole company right now. I love it. Yeah, that's that's great. So working um, with other women, uh, empowering other women to to take on something of their passion or that their craft. I mean, what, what kind of words of wisdom would you give somebody that maybe is um, similar to you? Like they love doing crafts, they thought about a small business, but they're really not sure. Like what kind of advice, what, what would you, you know, inspire or empower the, that woman on the, the edge? I would say like, if you have a dream to do it, then having that dream is the first step and you need to pursue that um, and give it your all. The, the biggest thing I've realized in this business and meeting other women in business is you have to stay true to yourself for your business to stand out from somebody else's. You don't want to start something or do something because it's working for somebody else that you see. You kind of have to find your touch and spin on it and 
your customers will really appreciate that. When you try to constantly evolve and change to do the next big thing or what's in, um, you can kind of lose sight of your customers that way. And so finding something that truly makes you happy um, and sticking with it, even on the hardest days when you're like, I don't know why I'm doing this, you're literally right there on the edge of the next best thing. So to just keep pushing forward and, you know, never, never stop brainstorming and working on that dream. That's great. Words of wisdom. And um, so besides the, uh, the stores that you're in and the website and your Facebook or social media pages, um, do you participate in like craft shows or fairs or things like that to get your name out outside of this local area? Yep. Um, we started that back last fall um, when things kind of opened back up a little bit. Last fall we did Main Street Market and um, that's in Belvedere. Um, and that was a lot of fun. It was really eye-opening to see, um, you know, the different ways that people advertise and how they set up and sort of that. And so um, gaining some experience from that in the winter time, um, I knew that that's what I wanted to do more of this year to get out there and to be able to interact with my customers um, and see them and be able to talk to them and have those conversations face to face. And so um, we had applied for several markets in the spring. Um, you always have to apply super early, like in January and February. And a lot of them that we are a part of, um, it's like an application. And so you don't know that you're going to get into it. And so um, we applied to a ton for the spring and a couple for the fall because fall's a little bit busier for us um, schedule wise. And so then in March, I think it was, we started getting the emails, you know, and it was, you were approved for this market and you're approved for this market. And so I think in May, we had a market every single weekend, back to back to back in, you know, a different county, different state. Um, and it got a little crazy. Um, I really like doing the markets. I, I love them. I love getting that interaction. Um, my kids love to come to them and help. I think they really just come for the food trucks, but you know, um, <laughs> that's okay. And um, so this fall, um, we did, um, Main Street Market again, and um, we have um, one that we are potentially doing in Rockford um, in November as like a Christmas show. Um, so we do a couple of them. We don't do them every weekend. Um, we try to do some of the more local ones um, just because we get to talk to our customers that support us and are already part of our customer base. And it's kind of nice for them to be able to meet, meet with me and see me in person and get to know the person behind the brand too. Yeah, that's that's super cool. Back to your story about your name and the the um, proceeds that you give to the canine. Like, why was that important to you? What is that? I mean, is that something that your family is, you know, that's part of your family or like, how did that all come about? Because I love when companies have <laughs> Uh, a mission like that and and mm -hmm. you know how they choose to donate or give profits to you know so if you could share a little bit why that yep. was important so um, our family, we are a big animal family. Um, we all love animals, um, particularly dogs. Um, we do, we did rescue a cat this past year. Um, so we've adapted a little bit, um, <laughs> but we, I mean, my husband has always had German shepherds. Um, I've always grown up having dogs in labs. And so, um, when we were together, um, we had a German Shepherd and then we were uh, approached by somebody that we know and they um, were looking to rehome um, their retired canine who had just retired from the county. And um, he, he has some issues. Um, I think we all have some issues. And so we were like, sure, you know, like we'll take him on kind of thing. And, um, 
that really was kind of like a turning point for us um, to realize that, you know, not all dogs are the same. Not all dogs want the same things um, and they have different personalities just like people do. And so um, we started to get a little bit more involved in um, our local area and we realized that a lot of um, the canines there's not a lot of places that have canines, um, cities or law enforcement agencies, just because of the cost alone. Um, and their vests and protective gear are really expensive. And so we wanted, we felt like, you know, if we're doing this um, business, you know, that we want to give back in some way. And so we thought, you know, we named it after Gunny. Um, we should give back, you know, kind of to the same way. And so, um, we kind of decided on that and we've always been, you know, the, a very involved in our community and stuff like that. And so we just thought that that was really important to us and we wanted that to be important to our business and our customers as well. Um, I know when I'm shopping, if I see a business that, you know, part of their proceeds are going to this, that I'm drawn to that a little bit more. Um, it just kind of tugs at my heart a little bit. And so... Yeah. I wanted that to be, you know, I wanted this business to represent me in different ways and what I love and what I hold as a value. And so I thought, you know, there's other people that do the same thing, too. So um, when people find out that, like, we're named after our dog, they're like, that's really cool. Like, we love dogs. And so um, that's it's kind of fun. And it's a it's a great talking point to um, to kind of hear why businesses chose their name. So, yeah, yeah. I love it. Does Gunny get to come with you to these uh, shows? <laughs> um, Gunny does not get to come <laughs> with us. Um, he's not really a people person at all. Um, so he's he's a great supervisor. He loves to let me know when you know packages come, kind of thing, and stuff like that. Um, our other one has come with um, to a couple shows. He's you know, come with when I've dropped off deliveries and, you know, stuff like that. He's come with, he goes into some of the stores with me. So he's, he's a little bit better. Um, Gunny just kind of likes to take a back seat and, you know, is more of a administration role for, <laughs> for the company. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, one last question before I uh, let you have a, a little bit of time to promote your business. Uh, tell me your favorite uh, scent for, for candles, because that's, I, I don't know if I shared that, but that that's how I uh, found out about your company. Um, I was at the Frosted Farmhouse, and yeah, I'm a fan of some of your scents. So what what's your favorite? <laughs> what's burning behind um, you? <laughs> um, I have one of my fall scents burning behind me, Inquisitive, but all of our candles um, of our... Um, signature scents are na are adjectives. So they're all kind of descriptive and people can really relate to them. And so my favorite is humble. Um, it's kind of a woodsy tone. It's it's very neutral. It's very gender neutral. It works. I, I don't think I've met somebody who hasn't liked that scent. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it's just a nice classic scent and it's a little bit different. And so that one's my favorite. Um, I also really think that I really like the name just to kind of remind us all that, you know, we just need to be a little bit more humble in our lives. So um, and then we just started um, a new collection um, and it's called the Experience Collection. And so all of those are named after experiences um, and fun things too. So my favorite from that one um, is called Northern Lights and it kind of resembles like what you would think that the Northern Lights would smell like. So it's kind of like icy, um, it has some um, pine in it and it's just kind of um, a little bit different, but Humble is, is my favorite for all year. <laughs> I like that, awesome. So at the end of my show, I'd like to give uh, my guests an opportunity to promote uh, and tell people where they can find you. Um, I know you mentioned a little bit before, but this is your time to shine and then I'll turn it over to you. All right, so you can find us um, on our Facebook page, Gunny and Co, or our Instagram. Um, we post stories on there. Um, you can meet Gunny and Kilo on there as well. Um, you can also visit our website and order directly from us, from our candles, diffusers, um, and wax packs 
as well. We have a little bit of an about me section on there. If you're in the state line area, uh, we are located at Frosted Farmhouse in Rockton, Vintage Bliss in Beloit, and the Midwest Rustic in Rockford. And you can also find our candles and wax melts in DeForest, Wisconsin at the Poppy Seed Coffee Shop. And next weekend, we have um, Friday and Saturday, our shop hop event at all of our locations. So um, there'll be goodie bags, there'll be, you know, some giveaways and that sort of thing too. So, and you can find that on our website as well. Great. Well, it was so nice to hear your story and learn more about your company. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best for this coming holiday season. <laughs> I know it started to to start. I mean, I had somebody on Facebook say, I'm not almost done with my Christmas. I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't even thought about it. <laughs> so that time is here. So was, was, who was that barking? That was Gunny barking. Gunny I think he thought the mailman was here, but it's just the wind. <laughs> I love so. it. So I, I just posted on my personal page yesterday um, that my dogs, they're, they're quiet normally until I get on a, a Zoom call or a phone call, <laughs> and then they have to be known, you know, like, it always happens. Yep. But I'm so glad Gunny said hello to us. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you again. Best wishes for the holiday season and everything is coming thank up you. for you. <laughs> Bye awesome. for now. See you next week. Bye.